Yeah, I call it other people's experiences. That's why I was invited to come by to give you my point of view. Other people, their experiences sometimes can be so valuable. How valuable is someone else's experience? I'm telling you, it could save you a divorce. Someone else's experience could save you bankruptcy. Someone else's experience could save you a heart attack. Someone else's experience could help you not to waste five years. Someone else's experience. To give you a clue, something they've lived through, give you some clues. You don't have to go through it. Or at least if you went through it, and then you'd learn how to survive. Other people's experiences can be so valuable. And that's why the process of learning is so important. To invite people into your life. To invite people to come by or to go where they are. Now, there's two kinds of people to learn from. Jot this down. Number one, failures. You got to learn from failure. It's too bad failures don't give seminars. They would be valuable. The problem is we don't want to pay them. <laughs> Here's a clue. Learn from negative as well as positive. We've got to be a student of negative. We've got to be a student of failure. We must be students of evil as well as good. If a guy's messed up his life for 40 years, just say, John, would you spend a day with me? It'd be a valuable day. Say, I'll bring my journal and take notes. Good-looking guy like you, beautiful family, every reason to do well, threw it all away. Tell me how you messed it up. Let him talk to you for a day. I'm telling you, those notes would be just as valuable as the notes you're taking today. Because the guidance system serves two purposes. Number one is what? Avoid the dangers. And number two, take advantage of the opportunities. We need both sets of stories. We need both experiences to draw from. So the clue is to learn from negative as well as positive. That's why the Bible is such a classic book. A list of stories on both sides of the ledger. Those that got it together and those that threw it away. Those that paid attention and those that let it slide. Those that bought up their opportunities and those that sold it out. I'm telling you, what a collection of stories on two sides. One called examples, the other one called warnings. Good sets of stories, warnings and examples. And if your story ever gets in one of those books, make sure they use it as an example, not a warning. <laughs> So learn from negative as well as positive. In leadership, we teach, find out what poor people read and don't read it. I mean, this stuff is not difficult to figure out. Find out how they talk and what? Don't talk like that. Find out, right? They're blameless and what? Tear it up and throw it away. It's not serving them well. So learn from negative as well as positive. But now here's the other side. Learn from positive. People that have got it together. People that have got good health. Find out. A mother who has magic with her children. Wouldn't you want to know? You say, Mary, meet me tomorrow morning for breakfast. Neat little cafe, you won't believe the service. I'll pick up the tab. So you meet Mary for breakfast and you say, Mary, I got to know, where'd you get this magic with your children? Mary says, well, to be honest with you, up until three years ago, my kids were out of control. And then I read this book and I went to this class and they taught me a little one, two, three, four. And I've been practicing that now for the last three years. That's how come I got this magic with my children. Would that be a valuable breakfast? Would you pick up the tab? Of course. Information is always available at such a small cost. How much is a book that could save your life? Right? How much is a conversation that would just take a little time, take a little effort? Okay? From the positive side. Now, there's three ways to learn on the positive side. Jot this down. Number one is to observe. We learn from what we see. We put some of it on video so you can see it. Send it by satellite so you can see it. We ask you to come, not just to listen, but we ask you to come and see what's happening. Come and see people in action. Come and see people who've got the job done. Come and see. So, be a good observer. Here's one of the best universities available, the University of Life. So keep your eyes open all day and learn. Some people have got it together. Some people are letting it slide. Learn from that every day by what you see. Be a careful observer. Here's a good watchword between now and the 21st century. Pay 
attention. Watch what's happening. Don't be casual now about gathering information that can be useful to your life. Casualness leads to casualties, whether it's on the highway, the freeway, or whether it's in life. You can't be casual with your health. You won't be happy with the results. You can't be casual with a marriage. You won't be happy with the outcome. You can't be casual with a friendship. You won't like the disastrous consequences five years from now, ten years from now. Come on. We must all pay attention, especially the next five years, getting ready for the turn, new millennium, new century, new chance, new opportunity, chance to write some new pages on a new century in a new millennium. Couldn't have a better span of time. The next five years. Pay attention. The next way to learn from others, of course, is to listen. We sometimes put it on cassette so you can listen. Somebody whisper in your ear over and over again. Turn your car into a mobile classroom. Do your share of listening. Listen better to the sermon on Sunday morning. Listen to the lyrics of the song. Sometimes the songwriters of, are the current poets of the day. One rock and roll song says, we're working on the mysteries without any clues. How well said of a generation. Listen to the lyrics. Listen to the dialogue in the movie. Don't just be caught up by the story. Do your share of listening. Part of the opportunity to learn is to listen well. Now, here's my last part on listening. Be a selective listener. Don't saturate your mind, consciousness, with a lot of stuff that doesn't count much. Be a selective listener. It's like tuning in the radio. You've got to tune out the static, tune out the silly, tune out the shallow, right? Tune out the mundane, the stuff that isn't going to count much for your health and your life and your future, for your family and your fortune. Just shut out a lot of that stuff and tune in to voices of value. That's the key, searching for voices of value. That's what we're all about, bringing, bringing a collection of voices of value that have got something to say based on wide-ranging reputation and experience. Be a selective listener. We must teach our children to be selective listeners, not to waste most of their time on the things that don't count. That's how life gets eaten up and leaves you with just the shell and not the substance. Okay. Now, number three was important. Shove taught me read all the books. He got me started on my library when I was 25. I've now got one of the better libraries. If you saw my library today, you would be impressed. You would probably say, no wonder. Mr. Rohn was invited to come, talk to us one more time. Look at this library. No wonder he's invited to speak around the world. Look at this library. No wonder he's healthy. Look at this library. No wonder he's got something to say. Look at this library. I'm asking you to have the same reputation. No wonder this family's healthy. Look at this library. No wonder this father's got it together. Lacks not the vocabulary into the stories to articulate for his family the vision of the future. Look at this library. No wonder this mother's super confident, striding into the future with her children, arms around her children, confidently taking them into the 21st century. No wonder she's confident. Look at this library. No wonder this person's got a sterling sales career. Look at this library. No wonder this person understands management second to none. Look at this library. No wonder this person's an extraordinary entrepreneur building an incredible organization worldwide. Look at this library. I want you to have the same reputation. Got to build a library. I haven't read everything in my library, but I feel smarter just walking in it. <laughs> my library. I was smart enough to buy it all. Now I got to be smart enough to read it all. Then I got to be smart enough to sort through it all and decide which of it is valuable enough to bet my money and my time. I want you to have that same procedure. Gather knowledge. Don't be lazy in learning. It's too important to your future. Don't be lazy in gathering information. That's why I appreciate you coming here. Appreciate you spending this much time. Appreciate you taking notes one more time. Some of you have already taken enough notes to last for a lifetime. You've been through seminars for many years of your life, but you're here one more time. And if someone else was speaking, I would be in the audience. Guess what I would be doing? Taking notes one more time. I'm telling you, never cease your quest for knowledge. Never cease your quest for learning. Because the next idea may multiply the value of your life by two, by three, by five, by ten. A lot of the fortunes of the world were built after the people became 50 and 60. Why? 
suddenly from a vast now amount of experience comes that next idea. And no matter how much you know, you never know when the last little piece is going to multiply it by so many times. It's unbelievable. We in the Millionaires Club invite a billionaire once in a while. Come talk to us. And he says, well, you guys are doing okay, but come on, get your act together. No telling what else you could do with the rest of your life. So always be eager to learn. Always be eager, eager to gather up that next bit of information that can explode your life into all kinds of equities and values. Read the books. Now, Shof recommended three. Let me give you those. He recommended more, but these were the three that got me started. One was the Bible. My parents made sure I was a pretty good scholar by the time I was 18, 19. The Bible, what a collection of stories. What a collection of vision. What a collection of poetry and history. What a collection of nuances, ways to say it unmatched by any other collection of documents that I know of. The Bible. Number two was a book called Think and Grow Rich. Think and Grow Rich. Shelf said to me, Mr. Rohn, doesn't that title intrigue you? I said, yes, sir. He said, wouldn't you have to get that book? I said, yes, sir. So I went searching for it. Guess where I found it? In a used bookstore. I paid less than 50 cents for it. I've still got the copy. Found out later it was a rare hardback cover. Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Napoleon Hill. What an extraordinary little book. Helped change my life. Think and Grow Rich. Now, it's got a few weird things in it. Uh, Napoleon was from California, I think. <laughs> but you can separate out the weird stuff, okay? Unless you're weird, just do the weird stuff. No, not really. There's so much value in this book. You know, and whatever. Make your own search and your own evaluation. But this book greatly affected my life. Now, another book that helped me become a millionaire by 31. Here's the title. If you're ready, say, I'm ready. ready. The title is called The Richest Man. The Richest Man in Babylon. Until my new book comes out, <laughs> I use this book as a textbook teaching kids wealth by 40, 35 if you're extra bright, much sooner if you find a unique opportunity. The Richest Man in Babylon by George Clayson, C-L-A-S-O-N. This book massively affected my life. Jot this down now under the title, Richest Man in Babylon by George Clayson. Number one, this little book is easy to find. Easy to find. The average bookstore's got it. If they haven't got it, they can get it for you. It's easy to find. Here's number two. It's easy to buy. The most you can pay for it is $12, $15. You can borrow that from your kids. $12, $15. <laughs> kids have got the money these days, right? Whoa. Number three. You've already guessed number three. It's easy. To read, it's in story form. That's why I use it for kids. It's in story form. You can read it. I'm telling you, in two or three concentrated evenings, you could read this little book. If you got inspired, you could read it in one evening. Lord, I would hope some out of this audience would get inspired, read this little book in one evening. You'll never be the same. You may come back to thank me years to come. Now, here's number four. It's easy not to look for this little book. And that's the heartbeat of my whole presentation so far. It's easy not to look for this little book. And now I've given you the answer to almost everything. <laughs> Haven't you ever wanted a simple little formula that gave you the answer to almost everything? I've just given it to you. This is it. This is the formula. The answer to almost everything. Number one, easy to find. Number two, easy to buy. Number three, easy to read. Number four, easy not to look. That's the answer to almost everything. Someone says, how come my paycheck isn't any bigger? This is, I've given you the answer. This is it right here. I used to think it was the economy. I used to say, this is all they pay. Mr. Shelf said, no, Mr. Rohn, 
That's all you're worth. I thought, whoa. New way to look at it. I said, you know, things cost too much. He said, no, let's face the real truth, Mr. Rohn. You can't afford it. I thought, new look. He said, hey, it's not it that's your problem. It's you. And this is it. This is the answer to almost everything. It's easy not to look. I've recommended this little book now to about three and a half million people over the last 33 years, by satellite and by every other means. Guess how many have actually gone and found this little book? Answer, very few. My best guess is about 10%. Go find it, based on my recommendation. You say, well, Mr. Owen, why wouldn't the other 90% go find this little book? Answer, we don't know. What do you know? You don't know, I don't know, nobody knows. Here's my most profound philosophical statement for the day, if you're ready. Some do and some... That's how profound this stuff is. You don't need to be a technical engineer. You don't need to graduate from Harvard. This is it. Some do and some don't. In the case of this little book, about 10% do and 90% don't. That's the answer. Guess when I went and found this little book? The same day. The same day I heard about it, I went and got a copy. Someone says, well, does that make you different than most everybody else? And the answer is yes. Yes. Somebody says, why is that? We don't know. <laughs> you don't know, I don't know, nobody knows. Guess how many people in America have a library card? 3%. Wisdom of the world available. Change your health, change your life, change your future, change your marriage, change your relationship with your family. There's no lack of information. But 3% of the people have a library card. 97% couldn't be bothered with the wisdom of the world. At 4.15, the guy's not headed for the library. He's headed for happy hour. Two for one, and it doesn't mean books. And this guy wonders why he doesn't get paid more. I'm telling you, the answer lies here. Now here's my advice. Join the 10%. Walk away from the 90%. Don't talk like they talk. Don't use excuses like they use. Join the 10% who find a little book. Join the 3% who have a library card. Guess how many people can retire from the income of their own resources when it comes time to retire? 5%. 95% wind up dependent. 5% wind up independent. I'm asking you to join the 5%. Walk away from the 95% who won't marshal their resources to a good end. I'm asking you to walk away from the careless walk away from those who blame an unlevel playing field or blame the Republicans, right? Or blame their employer or blame the economy or blame interest rates and taxes and prices. I'm asking you to walk away from that kind of thinking. Join the 5%, join the 3%, join the 10%, and you'll have the kind of life you've always wanted. For those who do, those who do become the envy of all who watch. And the 90% wonder why it doesn't happen for them, and they wonder why you were so lucky. But your testimony will now be, here's how I did it. I went and found the book. I got me a library card. I put my finances together so that I became financially independent. I joined the 5%. I'm asking you to do that. You must take on responsibility for your own education. Now, those first few years of our life, right, we were forced to. Through high school, you got to go to school. Someone says, well, I've finished school. Well, it's okay to finish school, but here's the clue. Zig Ziglar said it well. Don't finish your education. Education is a lifetime matter. Education goes on and on. The next clue can double the resources of the values of your life. Never cease your quest for knowledge. Become self-educated. That's the clue. It's like motivation. You've got to be mostly self-motivated. Life reserves all of its treasures for the self-motivated. Somebody says, boy, if somebody just come by and turn me on, what if they don't show up? <laughs> I mean, you've got to have a better plan for your life. Self-motivation. Now, here's the last clue, self-education. Formal education gets you a job. Self-education gets you rich. 
Formal education make you a living. Self-education make you a fortune. So I'm asking you to do like you're doing today. Never cease your quest for knowledge. Develop a thirst for ideas that can be life-changing. And then pass it along to your children. What's been so exciting for me ever since I learned this stuff, I also learned ways to pass it along. At first, I passed it along to my employees. I passed it along to the people who work for me and some of the people that I knew in my neighborhood. But then, when I was invited to step outside my little comfortable environment of my corporate world and step out to the public like I'm doing today and share it with an audience outside, that's when my life took on a whole new dimension. And there isn't anybody here who can't share. Recommend a book. Quote someone a poem. Give someone a dialogue from a movie that causes someone to think. Quote the lyrics from a song. Give someone the benefit of just a minute or two of your experience. It may be a light in a dark place that will help somebody to walk out of the shadows and into the sunlight.